All right, everybody, what's up? In this video, we're going to try to calculate the reactions and draw the shear moment diagrams of what we will discover is a statically indeterminate structure, and more precisely, just a statically indeterminate beam with a uniformly distributed load here over segment AB and a concentrated load at point C. So the first thing I want to do in this problem is check the determinacy. And the way I'm going to do that is, is a simple technique. I'm just going to compare reactions to the number of equilibrium equations I have. And it typically works for beams as long as you don't have hinges or uh, some other conditions like a, like a rigid component of the beam or something like that. Uh, but in general, for like a first course in mechanics, this, this comparison of number of reactions and number of equilibrium equations is enough. So let me go ahead and draw the, the reactions here from the support conditions. I have a fixed support at A. So I've got a moment at A, a vertical reaction, and a horizontal reaction. The roller support at B only has a vertical. And so when I look at the number of reactions I have, I've got four reactions. The number of equilibrium equations I have to analyze this beam is three. And since my number of reactions is greater than my number of equilibrium equations, I am statically indeterminate. What's more is that I have the difference between the number of reactions and number of equilibrium equations is 1, or 4 minus 3 is 1, which means I have one redundancy. The redundancy means that I could, in theory, remove one of these reactions and it will still be determinate, or the structure will still be stable. This also tells me that I'm statically indeterminate to the first degree. Now that I've figured out that I'm statically indeterminate, you know, I, I've got to use another technique. I, the equilibrium equations are not enough. I've got to use another technique. And in this problem, we're going to apply the method of superposition, which basically is a way to break up the structure into a, a, seri a bunch of parts and then add them back together. And when we break it up into a part, we want it to be simple enough that we can analyze it quickly or easily. And one of the first things that we need to do is decide that we're going to remove one of the redundants. Or really, the number of redundants that we have to remove is whatever it takes to make the structure statically determinate. And we're going to make a few drawings. So when I apply the method of superposition, I want to identify the redundant or redundants that it takes to make my structure statically determinate. And then I'm going to draw the loading structures and the redundant structure. In this problem, I'm going to remove the roller support at B to make this a statically determinate beam. The first drawing I'm going to draw is my loading structures. I'm also going to break up the loads. So I'm going to have one with just a, one beam with just the distributed load on it, and one beam with just the concentrated load at the tip. And these two drawings represent my loading structure, which I also like to refer as the zero structure, which, and this will become apparent later. Next, what I want to draw is my redundant structure. And for my redundant structure, I'm going to reintroduce the reaction at point B, which was six meters from the fixed support, as a, an external load applied like this. And this is my redundant structure. And since there's only one redundant, or really this is the first redundant, I'll call this my one structure. And what this means is that the sum of all three of these will give me my original structure, the problem that was initially stated at the beginning. So using the three parts that I've broken up my original structure into, I want to try to come up with a compatibility relationship. And the way that we're going to do that is to look at the deformation in each of these parts and look at it in reference to the original structure, which was given here. And what I know is that at my redundant, that vertical deflection at point B should be 0, which is 6 meters here. So if I, if I said that this is the x and here is this, V for deflection in the vertical. The deflection at point B, which is the deflection at 6 meters, is equal to 0. And according to the method of superposition, I can sum the deflection here. So here is x. And this is the deflection of my 0 structure. I'll call this V0W for the deflection due to the distributed load. And then here, this would be the deflection equation or deflection graph or reference for V0P which is the deflection due to my concentrated load in the loading structure. And then in this case here, I'll have, in terms of the coordinate system, this would be V1. I know that deflection at 6 meters should be 0, which is equal to the sum of the deflection due to the distributed load at 6 meters plus the deflection of my loading structure 
due to the concentrated load at 6 meters plus the deflection of my redundant structure at 6 meters. And here is my compatibility relationship. And if I look at the deflected shapes of each of these, Here's the deflective shape for each of the structures based on the loading. I know that here, I'm just going to call this the magnitude of deflection here. We'll call this delta B uh, zero W. This magnitude of deflection, I'll call that delta B zero P. And then this deflection here, delta B one. If I solve for these deflections, or I put them in terms of magnitude zero, this V zero W is a deflection downward. So in this coordinate system, this would be negative delta B zero W minus delta B zero P plus delta B one. And really, if you come up with a compatibility equation, I mean, you're you're just you're halfway there. Everything now is just calculating deflections or the magnitudes of these deflections. One of the major reasons that we broke up the loading like this is because we're not we don't want to go and use like a virtual work or double integration or conjugate beam method to calculate each of these deflections. What we'd like to do is utilize tables and appendices that are available in textbooks or you know reference manuals or something. And so what we're going to do is just look up the deflections associated with each of these loading types for a cantilever beam and and just figure out what the magnitudes are as quickly as we can. So these are the two uh, situations or loadings and for a cantilever beam that that's going to help us to solve this the rest of this problem out. And so if I look at here, if I look at this first part of our structure, this delta B zero W, it's a deformation at the end of the distributed load on a cantilever beam. And so here, in this case, delta B zero W, it's going to be this WL to the fourth over ADI. The most common mistake here is that people misinterpret what L is supposed to be and they'll put in the wrong uh, length. So for instance, in our beam, the length of the beam is nine meters, but someone's gonna actually put in nine meters here when you're supposed to put in six. So this delta B zero W in my compatibility relationship is the next for delta B zero P, what I'm looking for is a deformation at six meters when I have a cantilever beam loaded at the tip here. And so here in this case, I I've got to use this formulation here and my length is going to be 9 meters and the X or the position where I want the deformation is going to be 6 meters so here I'll have and then for my redundant structure I want to calculate the deflection right under the load which in this case is the deflection right under the load here for this cantilever beam and so I would have plus and here notice the length is defined as the distance from the support to the load so in this case you don't want to put L as you don't want to put this L as nine meters. You know that's a, again a common mistake. Is just put six meters here because that's where the load is applied. Okay, and then you notice this whole thing equals zero. So you can see how these all these EIs are going to cancel out. And if I look at it, I have basically one equation and one unknown that I need to solve for in this problem. And so when I go ahead and solve, I'm going to get that BY is equal to 15 kilonewtons. The positive indicates that the direction that we have BY is correct. So it's really 15 kilonewtons going upwards. What's next is that you have to apply the remainder of the equilibrium equations to solve for the other reactions. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, in my from my original structure, if I do some of the forces in the vertical equal to zero, I would get that. And this would tell me that Ay is equal to three kilonewtons upwards. And then I can do some of the moments about point A equal to zero. And this tells me the moment at A is zero, so that's that's great. That makes the really that means that the moment support there is not needed for this loading case.